everyone. Welcome to Play Dicely After Party. My name is Christy Klo, and we have a special episode for you because we're going to be discussing two of our uh, previous episodes, which is 1415, Thrill of the Chase, and The Bid. I have a ton of questions and a lot went down, so let's just go right for it. Um, Denny, unfortunately, oh, I should say that probably. I was going to say, Denny we're going to acknowledge here. that Denny isn't here. <laughs> Denny isn't no. here. We're going We've rogue. taken over. <laughs> we are the we're DM We're talking now. about him behind his back. He doesn't get to be part of this conversation. He doesn't even know that we were doing this either. Um, mm-hmm. Pretty funny prank. No, uh, <laughs> Denny is having some internet issues, unfortunately, and they are not resolving themselves. So we are taking the helm. And we put the we big say, boy pants on today. Yeah, we, we can, can say whatever this. we want. This is yeah. the excuse we have for what the trauma he's put us through up to this point. <laughs> we're just going to exactly. badmouth him for an hour and a half. No, no. I think we're physically capable of doing that to Denny. <laughs> Yeah. yeah the only times i've ever like talked about denny behind his back it's always been like us talking about how much we love him that like true. it's happened several times uh, uh, <laughs> anywho yeah. okay so the very first question is kind of denny related but we can all just kind of talk about him <laughs> as i punch my microphone <laughs> um so <laughs> we we started off episode 14 with a Chase, how did we feel about that? What did we think about the way that Denny set it up? Any thoughts and feelings? It was freaking awesome. Yeah, I thought that was a really great alternative to Chase. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially Gabe. Yeah, Gabe, something so it wasn't just like me, Drac, and Abe being like, we can run 90 (laughs) plus feet a turn. We caught him. (laughs) Well, exactly. What on earth would I have done if we didn't have alternate chase rules I did, did, would have I just just been me and you would have just gone to the bar like i don't know <laughs> it's gonna go sell Anthony, can you turn your mic up just down. a little bit again yeah Great. yeah um yeah and i thought it was really cool like way of setting it up because it it made it so we all could kind of play to different strengths and like have different ways that it panned out and so that was really great especially because i was able to grab like a a wagon or something and that helps it kind of felt more like role play heavy as well. Like there were definitely dice rolls and mm-hmm. stuff, but I feel like we got to narrate a lot of neat stuff that was happening. Mm-hmm. A very like cinematic chase. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. I got to do horse parkour. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. Horse core. Yeah. Horse I got core. to get clotheslined right out the gate. <laughs> <laughs> <Was epic. laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was a great chase. I think those rules are really good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I right. yeah Shout I've done to one. Who made them? I think it was hipsters and dragons. hipsters and dragons. Oh Goodness. boy, uh, Danny yeah. just like <laughs> over whatever yeah, words we're over. saying, <laughs> just put them. Just dub yourself saying the correct thing. Just dub over yeah, me yeah. like an old film. <laughs> there Excellent. you go. Um, there it is. So from the chase, we went to our interrogation with, I believe his name was Panna, the rat-like creature. Um, and from him, we learned some information about two of the gang lieutenants. Um, and what stood out to me especially is that the lieutenant of the storm guard is apparently a changeling. Um, for the people who are in Denny's campaign before, or if you just have like a history knowledge of the world, is this unique that there's like a changeling? Is that like an unusual race to see just out and about? And then how do we feel about there being a gang leader whose appearance is constantly changing so you can't pin them down? Yeah, so from the last one, we never actually encountered any changelings. There were doppelgangers that we mm. had encountered in the last one or like body switch things. And that was like a actually... big part of it, right? Yeah. Was the yeah. doppelganger stuff? Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, we had never actually encountered like a changeling. Yeah, just as a a person out and about, we never encountered any. Mm-hmm. And I don't know Although if, if they were changed, I guess we wouldn't know. <laughs> yeah, we wouldn't know, but yeah. I also don't know what, if Denny distinguishes between uh, between doppelgangers and changelings, like some some. I don't know. Maybe there's not a distinction in this world. I don't know. He, I don't know. Like maybe, in my opinion, I think he would just because, like, because doppelgangers were so prevalent in your previous campaign. It to me it would make sense if he was like making it a distinct thing. But I guess we won't know for sure until we play on. And he just so. dub your thoughts now. <laughs> yeah. Just a wall of text that scrolls by so quick. <laughs> 
Yeah. Oh, that's you really interesting, well, Danny. Oh, yeah. Wow. wow very, very yeah, cool. <laughs> you know, I didn't expect the part about the whale, but it was good. Fascinating stuff. Fascinating. Yeah. He's like, I can never leave these kids alone again. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's like a bit of a frightening prospect that like one of these lieutenants is just like you so when you can't like figure out who it is and, like I don't know if That's forever like worst yeah like if we're ever actually gonna like do anything to the lieutenants specifically if that's gonna come up at least like where we are now it might happen like later but it does seem like that's gonna be a, a bit of a concern so yeah I feel like yeah. it's gonna be one of those moments where they're just gonna be watching us and we're never gonna know it Oh, cool. I don't like that. What if they were the ones that were watching us? Um, like that one perception check we failed, which was at the the inn, right? Oh, maybe. Was, I mean, maybe not. Like, I don't know if they actually like are on the ground getting their hands dirty or not. But yeah. What if they are one of us? Oh my God! It's like the goat man. <laughs> Who is it? Which one of you? I mean, is I was it? absent, so get, probably giddy. <laughs> oh, true. <laughs> and you sense. wear a hat too. <gasps> I wear a hat. Oh my God! How could Crips you? We trusted you. <laughs> it's me. Absolutely terrible. <laughs> Ooh, another thing we learned from Panna was they're from, or the Stormguard are from Burl Bar, right? So mm -hmm. I wonder if yeah. we'll run into more of them as we continue further north. If we do go further north, that is. I assume yeah. we are eventually. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, my other... brother's the other way, so I think Drax's <laughs> gonna push to try to go after his brother. Mm. Nah. I do yeah, feel like this is going to be like a reoccurring um, like problem for us. Like yeah. we have we have so many that we're accruing now, but this is definitely going to be one of them, which is going to be like okay, gangs throughout the continent, druids to figure out bugs. So yeah, what do we really? prioritize? Yeah, I feel like what we've uh, done is how I approach playing. Uh, MMOs and I just run from town to town just acquiring a giant list of quests and I don't do any of them and then I just once I got this giant list of like 20 problems I'm like okay let's go solve them all and then we'll go cash them all in at one time and yep. uh, <laughs> D, D doesn't work like that <laughs> it's not gonna not. just wait for you <laughs> yeah. that's what we've done here we are with our long list of issues uh-oh <laughs> uh, I'm stressed it's a it's interesting because it's like D and D itself takes like if you're playing if you're doing actual play it does take so long for like certain situations to to happen like over sessions, um, so especially like we've it's been like three sessions that's only been like actually like two days in yeah. campaign I think so it's like you as the player have this kind of like stress being like oh no like there's like a lot of stuff happening that we need to get to but. At the same time, you're like, well, technically it hasn't actually been that long in game, but it's still mm -hmm. scary. And I think like Nell's feeling that same like thing that Abe felt um, before, like, like when we went to the Dune and Mountains, like wasn't Abe feeling like that was like a selfish decision on well, his part? Still feeling that way. <laughs> yeah. It's something I want to like bring up um, in uh, like in game at some point, but I don't know if I know that. Oh, now I'm echoing so bad. Sorry. Anthony, you might have to like mute when I'm talking. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like, I don't know if I know that Abe's feeling like selfish about it, but that's like, Nell's definitely feeling that way now too, about like solving this crime thing. Although now it seems like we didn't really have a choice because everything was closed, but yeah. I don't know. It's like, ah, it's so stressful. Yeah. Um, speaking about feeling conflicted, how did we feel we did at the Golden Lion? Did we, did we do a good performance? Um, I love you. Uh, yeah. Like, love it was design. such a like in the middle performance that I don't know if it worked for either side we were trying. Like we weren't nice, we broke all their shit, but we were nice enough that if anyone was actually watching us and like, oh, did they do the shit? We clearly were being too nice to them. <laughs> Like, it was like, you guys were. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Abe was fucking shit. Well, like, that's true. We have we we have lost so much. Like, so much has kind of gone wrong in this scenario. Where like, <laughs> no kidding. Guards are frequently stopping at the place that we're staying in. We spoke <laughs> near the piece of paper many many times before realizing it could be a telephone essentially. Mm -hmm. Um like 
we walked into the guard office and walked out. Yeah. I, I, I feel like if we've been seen, like we've lost all credibility. So yeah. like, well, this is an opportunity to at least make it seem like we're just kind of, we're thugs. We just might be stupid thugs. <laughs> Right. Yeah, Honestly, I think that's that. I think that's the path forward. Uh, we're just session. dumb. We're just stupid. <laughs> pretty, pretty stupid. Yeah. Not gonna lie, bro. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. Um, I don't know. The whole thing, like this whole thing, has been so confusing to me, in and out of character, because just kind of like I don't understand like what we were trying to accomplish for the longest time. To be oh, honest, yeah. I was just like, what the fuck is going on and then like when we like had to go back after they established it i'm like is anyone actually swinging by to check out like what we've done are they just like assuming if we have their up contract they're taking at us at our word because elowin stood outside with the the scry paper so i didn't know if we actually needed to like really like, well that's that's not. why i stood outside because i was like you can just go in and be like hey bud we're here for the paper that's right but and, i said you went in to start smashing stuff <laughs> Well, yeah, okay. like, there's been a lot of times where I feel like a couple of us have been on like one page and other people on the other page and then like two things are happening. And I'm like, what is the thing we're actually doing right now? Because I have no idea. and I'm so lost. So it's been I've actually like hated this crime stuff because well, and like, you know what? This Mel feels really so our, out of her depth. This isn't really our quest. Why are we even doing this? <laughs> Well, and that's like the thing, because like at first it was like, oh, Nell pushed to do this. But I'm really happy like Denny like supported me as a DM in that choice and made it so like everything is legitimately legitimately closed. He's like the library technically is closed. Like we wouldn't actually be able to be able to go and study or anything right now. He he told me like the other night. So until we solve the crime thing, like we wouldn't have actually been able to do what we needed to do in Fallon Bridge. So that was like validating for me as the player but like Nell still like feels like really like bad about everything because it's just like everything's going to shit and she doesn't like, know how to handle it so quite honestly I'm, I'm really looking forward to yeah. seeing how Nell develops in the position of leadership like it's going to be a big big arc I'm sure but yeah I, th- I, I saw a lot is. of stuff in the VOD for the recent episode and I was like oh this is good shit Wow, <laughs> I was just not. Seems like Nell did yeah. not want this. <laughs> I just think like she doesn't know how to handle it, and so like that was kind of like, um, like part of like what where her headspace was uh, at the end of the the fourteenth episode um, was just like, um, and we can get into, into this a bit more, but like the interaction that we had between, or like that we interrupted between the Mary Hall gang members and the Dragonborn like poisoner oxum um like that whole thing confused her so bad because it's like well clearly like mary hall like is in a way trying to help and like he does seem like a bad person but like there's also like potentially corruption within mary hall if we listen to like one of our sources but i don't know if they're right either and it's like she's been feeling like everything's been murky since our fight at the railroad like that was like the first moment where she was like everything is so confusing well it's like not her first but like that was like a really impactful moment and it just keeps getting worse and fucking worse it's like I can't like she can't like make he- make uh, heads or tails of what she's actually supposed to do she's like oh I can fight crime and it's like no even the crime's fucking confusing like <laughs> what do I do yeah, yeah so. there's been few things that we've encountered that have just been like be good guys smash bad things and so yeah, yeah, a lot of it's like, oh, we're gonna do something good. Oh, but like, are we doing something good? Or like, these people are bad, but are they actually bad? Mm-hmm. And I think that's what's like really messing with her. And especially like, so going to like the the clock tower to like clear her head was partly like, so the whole plan when she was growing up, like she was always kind of like um like in a sense like a backseat sibling. It's like each like each one was kind of more outgoing than she was in their own way. And so like her eldest sister was going to be the leader, like her, like the brother um, below her was like kind of like the prankster and very charismatic. And then like her twin was way more of like the adventurer. And she just wanted to stay home and be a librarian essentially, or like a guardian of the forest. And so now she's like, we were supposed to go off together, like her and her twin. And she was going to tell me what to do. And she's not here because she's frozen in time. And it's like, I am not equipped to make these decisions. And so 
just I don't fucking know. I have no idea. So yeah. It feels bad. She's gonna grow so much though. This you know, is, I am very this excited. Is growth like, central. Yeah. Thing now. It's very fascinating because it's like I think it's fun, like so much is coming to the forefront that I wasn't expecting, and it's fantastic. I love D D for that specifically. <laughs> so good. So good. Mm-hmm. I have um, fun about the Mary Hall yeah. gang. Do it. Um, because I remember the Cowl was talking some trash. Um, and at the end of the day, Cowl and crew is about thievery, right? And the Mary Hall gang is about what stealing from the rich and giving to the poor. Another thieves guild, so they're probably in competition with one another. So they're probably not a fan of each other. So I'm inclined to believe that whatever Cowl told us is a crock of garbage. <laughs> But mm. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, that I would think... make a lot of sense. Oh, was he the one that told us that they were like, oh, maybe it doesn't really get to the poor? I thought that was uh... Jeanette. Let me just, uh... I'll check my notes. Maybe I got the person confused, but I feel like those two, th- like, again, it thought... all sounds like another thieves guild to me. Yeah, I thought it was one of the other guilds that told us that. Maybe it was him. Um, and that's the same thought I was having. I was like, well, of course the guilds don't like each other. They're going to say shitty things about each other. It was Cowell that kind of hinted that he didn't think like he's like, oh, Mary Hall, like um, act like they're do-gooders. But he was unclear about how much wealth they're actually returning to the poor. So, to yeah, be fair, it's I probably don't... still true. Maybe. Yeah. And that's the thing. It's like I think that's why that interaction between uh, the Dragonborn and the Mary Hall like was so confusing. Because it's like. But maybe see, like, it's a... like more of like a higher up thing like the higher ups are taking more than their fair share and like the lower yeah. downs don't really know that yeah i i am i think they are they seem decent to me the mary hall gang also i think we're gonna need their help in a hot second here so uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah i'm inclined to <laughs> like them right now uh-huh. and like jumping ahead like into the um episode 15 briefly before, we're gonna go back to 14 because i was going to ask ryan but um so the Goliath that I um, like saw in the elevator, I told you guys this already, but Ryan wasn't there for it. So that is like, I'm like 98% sure that's my brother. Um, so that really like fucked me up. Um, and he is allied with the Mary Hall gang. And so like, I don't know like why he's there. He was clearly trying to like avoid my eye for something um, for some reason. But yeah, I'm like, if he's in that group, I have to assume like he's made like the judgment call that like they're for the most part trying to do good. But I obviously won't know until it's all fucking over. So, so when is... when was uh, the last time that Nell saw her brother? Two years ago ish, maybe a bit longer. Um, because I think like if I'm 20 I think he's 22 so his he's Finn and then Vesta is 23 and they left at the same time like on their paladin like missions which would have been like two years ago um so yeah so they don't know anything that's gone like happened like in the village they don't know about like the fact that everyone's frozen or like that my magic is messed up so I'm like oh, oh that would be a fun you. conversation I know I'm like dreading <laughs> it I'm so like nervous for the next two weeks <sighs> Ugh. It's gonna be great. I mean, we'll find out real quick if he spins a sword on us <laughs> or is a friend, you know. He's not gonna spin a he... sword on us. You don't know. <laughs> I mean, you're nice. He's been like brainwashed. I can't imagine that would happen, but I hope no. oh my God. I'm excited to hear Jenny's this conversation. Plotting. Yeah. No, I, I wanna know what, what's going on. We gotta survive first for a conversation. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, let's double back to that in a sec, because I, I want to first um, to have Ryan tell us a little bit about Gideon's dream slash like potential flashback that happened at the end of the episode. Um, I kind of don't really remember everything that happened in it, but basically it was like, uh, was it, oh, what's her name? The gnome's name? Charity. 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 Oh, it is Charity. Okay, good. I was worried <laughs> I was confusing that with the seven. So um, yeah, so Charity potentially like had him like, met with younger Gideon about some potential magic. So how are you feeling about all Yeah, that? so I have some concerns because at the end like of the you, day- Ryan or are you Gideon? Yes, um, because basically 
what that means is that <clears throat> like out of game charity is kind of a big deal um kind, like kind of yeah a, kinda. Kind, of, kind, of, kind of a huge <laughs> deal in fact um she was one of and, the leaders right yeah he was one of the leaders in the battle of Robar. she leads the arcanet now she's, yeah right. okay. she's big she's big deal big big deal um and if so she approaches gideon being like i'm interested and this kid could learn potential to be something greater i'm like why wasn't he sent to wizard school immediately what held him back probably his family why did they do that i don't know um it makes me think about what craziness is going on in balesville as we speak and it's like how long ago did that start happening is this a is it like the event happened and then everything went bad afterwards or was it slowly sort of festering underneath the 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 the, the facade of like you know it being a cute quaint little town uh mm -hmm. prior to the event uh and then Gideon's just concerned because again his whole world his whole world's been turned upside down so now it's just like how many flips can it do at this point um it's just uh it, it's bad like it's really bad do you think um, they didn't send Gideon because like money like it was too expensive to send him to school I don't know there could be hmm. an endless number of reasons and with the recent developments in Balesville with there being a cult and with the word host being spoken I don't know okay <laughs> it could be very oh, concerning true um and yeah i'm what if concerned the demon that, is that, inside gideon that that someone's trying to i don't know if because again like out of game knowledge i chose the mark of the host which is a dragon mark which is typically only available for halflings but i think denny took that and went a little further with it <laughs> and I mean, i'm so thankful <laughs> uh -oh. uh, so i don't know that's if there's something in gideon that's just like Again, it's a mark, time. right? Like there's, it means something, but we don't know what it means. <clears throat> I had uh, a thought at one point. Um, I think I said this in the recap for the episode, but um, like Charity works for the Arcanet and the library that we're going to right now is the Arcanet library. And I'm wondering if there are some like restricted sections somewhere, probably not in that main library, but in some like deeper catacombs in that building that has information on Gideon. Like yeah. it's, were they studying him? Ooh, maybe and like we <laughs> right do have a favor now. we have a favor from ulumfa and papar so there's a chance that like we could get down there and access that once we deal with all of this other bullshit mm -hmm. yeah Fuck, i just want to study so bad um <laughs> it better happen in 2021 that's all i'm gonna say I'm oh like, my god it better happen <laughs> oh yeah it I might not know it's, it uh... might just, like I, I don't know how many more episodes we have left in the year but if this doesn't happen until 2022 i'm gonna be pissed <laughs> yeah, two or three the left this year. <gasps> yeah we did joke that we would never uh... get to the library and i really hope <laughs> that joke doesn't not. come true i know i still have i mean after I last session it. it might not come true <laughs> we all die so look we'll go Stop to the ghost the library nancying. um but for, for ryan like did you write in kind of like a memory loss situation into gideon's backstory is that like yeah. a okay yeah. i i left I, gaps I, in what oh there's like okay multiple gaps I was, okay yeah that's what i was wondering because i thought like the gap was like after like the the incident in balesville but if there's like multiple that kind of makes more sense i didn't so. specify like before the incident what was lost um mm -mm. but like just before the incident during the incident and after the incident i've left large holes uh in his memory um but i'm kind of happy that denny took some liberty and was like yeah, how about before <laughs> so i'm 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 yeah. very thankful that he he did that um cuz it's just so there's a lot of potential there for some good juicy horror goodness um and some bad times waiting to happen yeah. I just want to say like that's like <laughs> my favorite thing about like D and D as like a storytelling medium is that like you you as the player get to like write a little bit of backstory for yourself and then give it to someone else and then get to be surprised by like what happens and I think that's just so fun and compelling. It's like yeah, I like know this character, like I am this character, but like I don't know everything and like where it's gonna go. It's so fucking fun, and cool. Um, yeah. 
that's all I had for uh, for episode 14. Anything else people want to talk about that before we dive in to the bid? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm liking that we're starting to see Elwyn become very protective. Um, <laughs> that's, yeah, that's, I felt uh, so bad. <laughs> you should have, really? why did you just leave? You didn't tell anyone. There's <laughs> crime. <laughs> To be fair, hey, and I and Abe left <laughs> the day before. Yeah, yeah that's what I was thinking. Yeah. I was like, Halloween didn't give yeah. a shit about us, Adam. <laughs> yeah, that's he came old. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like the two of you guys had gone on like your own kind of little like outing, and I kind of like I, during that episode, like had wanted to do something similar because I felt like shit that like I was like we can go fight these ghosts, and then I was unconscious for like most of that fight and like didn't wasn't helpful at all and everyone's like oh we have two strong people in the party i'm like we don't we have one it's a but i'm like also here i'm just tall that's all like but then you guys your moments were so good i was like i don't need to get into mine right now but then like things kept compounding and so like i think it like it was like that final interaction between the mary hall and the the dragonborn guy that just like really like put me like out of my head and so the way I, like I, I did roll I always roll to see if I'm going to be smart or not. And I roll an intelligence check and I roll really low um, <laughs> to be like, yeah, she's too like kind of out of it to like even like comprehend, like telling anyone. Um, so yeah, my, my justification there. But. You're just such a little baby elf. <laughs> Thank you. You're so, you're so young. It's such <laughs> a funny thing to me. Cause like, like obviously like there wasn't an option to like not make her young because it wouldn't make sense that I've just been like been at home for like a hundred years or whatever and like uh my village and like this particular like way of the religion being done is like relatively new obviously because it's only been this way since the um solution since the ascendancy yeah since the ascendancy yeah. Oh, yeah. okay after yeah, the yeah. so I was like I bar. remember all the like, yeah, all the specific names. Um, it's only been 50 years. So I'm like, I couldn't make myself that old, um, unfortunately. And then I was like, oh, but she's like a nerd. So she'll have a lot of history stuff. Then I'm rolling around with you two old fuckers. And it's like, you <laughs> fucking lived it. So that like one part about like my character just can't actually like come up in any way that's useful at all. It's like, oh, I read this in a book. It's like, oh, you wrote the book? Oh, cool. Absolutely. <laughs> Fuck me. Never mind. <laughs> Disregard. <clears throat> Here's our first hand account of it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like, huh, huh, huh. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah. Well, even though Ellen was alive for a lot of stuff, she didn't really uh, partake. Your uh, Zarya is yeah. really the better person to talk to. But, I mean, like between the two of you, though, it's you're both like such ec excellent sources in like different ways that, yeah, just, yeah. Um. Anywho. Uh, the first question that I have for episode 15 is actually one that Denny gave me for Adam, which is, what does Abe think about alone in silence? <laughs> that shit killed me. Yeah. That was so funny. <laughs> I was thinking about it of like, everybody has all these things to do. I already said my thing. I, I guess I'll just sit there. <laughs> um... Uh, I think Abe, it's just like that was as we we mentioned it already, but there was uh, we got to Ballonbridge, we went to the library, we got the crap kicked out of us by a bunch of ghosts. Um, a, a, an evening passed, then we we had a bad crime afternoon or morning, and then a good crime <laughs> afternoon. Um, and then another evening passed and then it was that time. So there was a lot of stuff to pack into two days. So I think just thinking about that and ruminating on again, kind of that, that guilt of like, if we gotten here even a day earlier, two days earlier, you know, there's so much more we could have kind of maybe even done. Um, and just, you know, thinking about memories, um, cause I didn't, I didn't really realize in the last after party when Denny asked me about the vision that he gave me at the beginning of that session, I think, uh, I forgot about the fact that, um, the chosen was chiseling 
the mark into his chest in the wilder i think it was um so just kind of taking some in-game time to have a think about that and ruminate that um but yeah that might have been the first hour the rest of the time was just staring at a wall love that what are abe's thoughts on that specific part of the the vision um it's definitely been alluded to that the chosen seems to have failed many times or either failed or been in direct conflict with Meldon many times. Um, so it's kind of just like, his Abe is under the impression that he's a, a new thing, that this is kind of a last ditch effort to, get the crystal doing something like f- not necessarily being the chosen of old, but being some sort of chosen that can go out and start, you know, sending people express mail delivery to Meldon's realm. Um, uh, but if it seems as though there's these many iterations of the chosen being like, this is your last chance then like maybe Abe isn't like, maybe there's been many Abe's if that makes sense. Many like rebooting of the system kind of thing. Right. Many last chances. Yeah. What that and means, like in know, this theory, cause I think like what threw me, it might've been like the last um, after party. It was like my timeline was all skewed. Cause I keep forgetting about like the very like distinct, like separation of, time periods that is in this world so like do you think all these like failed chances would have been before the desolation like that part of yeah, the chosen history i'm a, under the impression that the desolation happened and then malden and the chosen because of their close proximity were um trapped in the crystal above starshire together oh um, true. and then when the last campaign's party broke the crystal open. They were released at the same time. But I, I, I don't remember if I've said it or not, but it also, one thing Abe kind of, I think I mentioned it to Drac. One thing that Abe is thinking too is like, if the Chosen is supposed to be so powerful, why doesn't it seem like they did anything to stop the desolation? Mm-hmm. You know, I think I remember that conversation. Yeah. Yeah. I think you guys did take to talk about that. So then maybe it's a possibility that it was in some part due to the chosen's failure, but that might be too like grand an idea to be like, my character failed the world and then the world ended because of my character. Maybe it was because <laughs> of Meldon's uh, hubris. Maybe. Oh, that he's sitting there being like, oh, that's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> it's all Adam's fault. Get rid of the old <laughs> ideas. <laughs> yeah, but... It's because of Abe. Yeah. <laughs> that robot prick. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then on that note, I had a question. Um, at the very end of Abe's like meditation, whatever, um, I forget how Danny worded it exactly, but it was essentially that you received like a message or like heard like a word on the wind kind of thing, right? Like, and it was the fairy man, fairy man of the chosen, right? Is that what he said? So I messaged Denny about that and um, he might have misquoted himself. Supposed to be the ferryman of the worthy. Oh. Not the ferryman of the chosen. That makes more sense. Yeah. Like Charon. Kind of. Very interesting. But Abe doesn't know that. Adam does. <laughs> Do I give you a copper piece? Of- <laughs> well, like, it, did he mean it in like a retcon kind of way? Like, this is what I was like, what what it actually said to you? I'm assuming. Like, uh, yeah. Because what did he uh, say? Um, yeah, I asked him, did he mean ferryman of the chosen or ferryman of the worthy? And he said, I meant worthy. I said chosen, didn't I? And I said, you might have. <laughs> 
Hmm. So then like that phrase or whatever, like ferryman of the worthy, does that mean anything to Abe at all? Does it have any significance? Um, it's, you can also like get into it in like in the game if you prefer, but just curious. It is uh, kind of a, 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 well, I guess there's no harm in saying it, it is a, a pseudonym for the chosen. It is a an alternative identity. Interesting. It kind of gives you kind of gives you a more of a a, a dark twist to your duties, though. Reminds mm. me of like the ferryman <laughs> of like the river Styx or something like that. Yeah, yeah. 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 Charon. <clears throat> oh, is that that character's name? Yeah. Yeah. yeah the Aaron. Greek mythology. I didn't know that. My bad. No problem. <laughs> oh, good. I played Hades. It's the only reason I know <laughs> yeah, that. <that's> me. <laughs> I'm like, I know because of Hades. <laughs> that Such game's just chance. a history lesson, right? It so feels good. like it sometimes. <laughs> it's so good. Yeah. Man, I wish that was a game that I wanted. Like, I, I would like to play it, but it's not the kind of game that I'm good at. So I've just been watching like a few like um, playthroughs here and there, but like not all the way through or whatever. But mm -hmm. anyway. Um, yeah, that's really interesting. I'm curious to see like what comes of that. But if I ever uh, get to kill someone who's worthy as <laughs> Abe, I'm sure there'll be a great little narrative thing for you there. <laughs> Excited True. for the day. You know, I'm can't wait till you get to kill someone. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited! I want to see what happens. Um, yeah. But I'm willing to bet. I bet you there's somebody worthy in this like bid thing, like. Maybe, I'm maybe Nell's worried. brother. Nell's brother is. <laughs> no, don't say that. Don't even say it. I don't know. <laughs> and now that you've said it. Yeah. Daddy? I didn't say anything. I didn't say anything. Do it. I take it back. <laughs> nobody's worth, oh nobody's worthy in Valen Bridge. God. It's Parsifal. Yeah, that would actually worth... destroy the party, though. That would oh, be, yeah, a, that would be a, a real pink. problem. Well, yeah. I was like, I feel like our friendship is like really like, bit like, I don't know. Like, Nell's like been like pretty like, a uh, few thick and thin, but I do think that would probably have like a big <laughs> yeah. fat wedge in between. <laughs> Nell turns truly evil and like tries to murder Abe in cold blood. <laughs> yep. um, yeah. Fuck. I was hoping you were about to say Sinric, and I was like, maybe that'd be kind of dope. <laughs> like, if like He's you could like the assassin could get us out of there. Be. I was thinking <gasps> the assassin. Ooh. Yeah, that's the non-comedic answer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I actually have a and question about her too, answer. which is like. <laughs> What was Fight. our like first impression of this assassin? And I also believe that like, I think my theory is that like, she is kind of going to be like a, not like fully end game, but more like a mid game problem for us. Cause yeah. I'm like, I don't think there's any chance in hell like that we would be able to, to come out the other side of a fight with her well or alive. So yeah. Yeah. I think she also probably knows that we're the ones that uh, shut down her ghost maker. Uh oh. Oh, I bet she was the one who was watching us. Yeah. Mm, she probably was the one that was watching us. Fuck. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, we Hopefully, not while we were doing that. It's oh, fine. Boy. I'm sure it's fine. We, that was a bad joke. Sorry. It's fine. If we <laughs> can get out <laughs> of this situation, that's definitely something we need to talk about in character because <laughs> I didn't hear what the joke was. That you guys uh, oh we're so fucked that's the joke <laughs> oh okay <laughs> you said that you hope she wasn't the one watching us fuck and I said, I hope <laughs> that she wasn't seeing us do that <laughs> i understand I mean, some Fantastic. people are devoyers i don't know hey <laughs> we don't know her life denny made her very attractive to me specifically I... so well it's in general <laughs> yeah. Yeah. i was gonna say well, why are all the like... villains so hot I guess that's just how it goes. Nineric especially. Like, mm, he was wearing uh, some sort of kimono thing. <laughs> Boy, that really he gets sounds very distinct. Kimono. He does. Yeah. Old as hell. You know, I think Lyco like, and this yeah. assassin, they should hook up. I'm just saying. Okay. I didn't get the Lyco. They have beautiful children. <laughs> vibe. But they I just look very, very pale. Properly. Yeah, I need to see like actual art so I can understand how hot I he is. I like, tell you how hot he is in my brain. There was okay. something about I mean, pouting about his dad not paying attention to <laughs> okay. him, though. Don't worry, so we, don't have to come back to we don't have to come back around to this, I remember now. 
Lyco That's has really daddy like issues. Yep. Yeah. The I whole just time like he was just like talking to a confident name, just person like... put in their place. You know, it's just there's something. Okay, we can continue. <laughs> Anyways, I have a question for Christy to take us away from that. Yep. Bring it. Um. So you got yourself a little cute fox pendant. Oh yeah. To try to connect with Raynard. How do you feel about uh, that connection and knowing that Raynard is watching you by flipping doors around? Um, it's it's weird. Like, I probably shouldn't I shouldn't have done that scene when I did it, but I was because I was thinking like that was something I was planning on doing. Like once we'd been able to go to the library and like study, and I understood my like magic a bit more. But then like we were going into this meeting, and I was nervous, so I just like figured like, oh, if I can bring anything that perhaps like makes things go a bit smoother if we get into a fight like that might be a good idea and so um in a sense like I don't know if like now like knows that it's called an arcane focus but like that's what I'm trying to make as me as the players I guess for her it is just meant to be kind of like a magical connection or something I don't know I feel like it's like kind of like not easy to justify now because I might have done it too early but do you have a holy symbol for your paladin spells yeah, I have a signet ring that um, everyone, like all of the um, paladins, receive during the ceremony. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's interesting. Like, I'm curious to see where things go with this after our current situation. Um, once we can, like, pretend, like if I can practice with Rhea and like learn a bit more about it. Um, I guess it's confusing. It's like, okay, well, clearly he's like interacting with me in a way. And I'm like trying to connect in a sense so that like um, I'm trying not to be afraid of it from like Rhea's advice. Um, but it's also confusing because I'm like, why in our initial conversation was he like fucking with me? I'm like, I guess that's just like his thing because he's a prankster, but she's very confused about it. Um yeah, I just have a lot of questions for him that I know aren't going to get answered for a while. And it's... I think I like him. As well. I like, think I want to as well. And it's it's really, really hard for me because, like, this might have been the hardest thing I've ever, like, done for myself is, like, given, like, a um, character chaotic magic but made it so they are, like, so fundamentally, like, against being chaotic because I normally pay very chaotic, like, kind of, like... Um, D and D characters. I was trying not to do that. I'm like, oh, we'll see how it goes. Though maybe I'll just like <laughs> lean into my natural instincts because it's really hard. Because I keep like doing it in, like little scenes here and there in this campaign. And afterwards, being like, it's not out of character. <laughs> like, when done that. like wanting to like throw the the wine bottle at like Abe so he could punch it. I was like, that's so not like a Nell thing. I just thought it would be funny. <laughs> so, it's a hard thing to balance. But I'm like, maybe. I mean, it's the real you coming out though. Oh. I, it's like how I want to play the game, but I was trying to do something different. So, yeah, we'll see how it happens. I'm like, maybe I'll just get really chaotic. Who knows? I don't know. No, everyone has those kind of like moments of like outside of like what they normally are like and stuff. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah, like I don't think anyone's like ever in character of themselves 100 percent of the time. But yeah, I think it's like a it's like a little switch you flip. Just like, you know, if you really have to be in character, then you turn it on. But then you're like, just kind of cruise it most of the time. Yeah, for sure. I think it's like, especially if like things feel like too stressful for a while, like peaks and she has to do something that feels like kind of silly or out of it. And then like, be like, oh, I shouldn't have done that. And then go back to being serious. And then it like keeps happening. Mm -hmm. so I'm not entirely sure, like, as I progress on this path, which way it's actually going to fully lean. Yeah. So, uh, I'm just super concerned about Nell getting the fox pendant and like trying to like make friends with Rainer just, to, just because of like that one interaction that she had where there was like the feeling of like fire sort of like I can't remember exactly what happened but it was like that like there was a moment where fire was like comforting Nell and like there was very clear like she was connected with fire and then Rainer just like just like bust open the door and was like sup I'm here to play and then fire was just like dude what, what are you doing <laughs> And then they started like a yeah. bickering and then Nell was freaking out about it as she should, because that's just not okay. Um, and, you know, I don't, 
I don't know. I'm I'm concerned about Reynard. I'm super concerned about Reynard. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I mean, I am. I'm curious, and I'm, because like I think it's interesting too, because that moment would have been the only time Nell ever actually felt any sort of connection to Fyra, because that was the whole thing. It's like she's never felt anything like before. Um, so yeah, that's kind of concerning. But I can almost see it going in the way of being like she does hold a bit of resentment towards Fyra in like a twisted way. Cause it's like, if you would just like talk to me, like if you had just done anything, I wouldn't have had to lie to my family. This whole like thing wouldn't have happened. Um, so it's like, I can almost see like, Oh, if like Rainer keeps being the one that like talks more, her kind of like latching on to that relationship in like a fucked up way, even though it's like, you think it'd be the opposite. Like clearly he's responsible potentially for like pushing fire out, but I don't know how like it might just like, play out in that way so mm. i don't know it's very exciting. i'm concerned <laughs> about a lot of things in this game <laughs> <laughs> so well, much of it yes. is concerning yes. um uh cool um how did we feel like um we did in preparing for this meeting that we went to um does anyone wish that we had perhaps planned things differently we didn't know what we were getting into. No, yeah. no. I actually I, feel I like think... we did well. Yeah, I'd say you guys yeah. did well. You did well. For not knowing anything, we did great. Yeah. I think like the only thing I wanted to make different is that like I really like I kind of mentioned it when we were planning, but I didn't follow through with it enough because I don't know. Like I wish we had had some sort of like code word or like a better system in place to talk to each other once we were in there without blowing our cover and like yeah. being like how far is too far for us in this gambit? Because I think it really fucked us. That was in the ass. Uh, fucked us at the end of that episode. So <laughs> you could cast yeah. message. Well, I can, but then it's like I also try to like talk to the whole party, right? Like, yeah. And it's like awkward too for all just like standing there as I like. That's true. I guess it is kind of obvious. <laughs> Even with message, doing. like when you respond, like you hear the message in your head, and the person casting it speaks it in your head, but you responding. You have to say it out it's loud. True. It's not like in your brain. Mm. Denny has allowed me some liberties in, like, especially when we were talking to the, the stable hand of it being entirely mental. So I don't actually know like how um, specific he's going to get about that. He easily could though, because it is technically a verbal spell. <laughs> so, but I've just been like in for, my head. I think this situation, he would probably be like, you guys are trying not to blow your cover right now. You're not going to be able to do this silently. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was those were some trials. Yeah, and we're about to get to them actually. Um, that was some cool I, stuff. Before we get there, I do just want to ask Logan. Um, so Rhea decided to take the chaos route at the beginning of the meeting when we first <laughs> entered. Um, what prompted them to to do that? And oh. is there anything specific they were hoping to gain? <laughs> well, I was like, we have to stand <laughs> out from all of these groups. And so everyone else is skulking in the shadows. And my whole thing going into this, like the fact that we're like, you know, just like people, like we're not like, even as a gang, we don't look like this uniform thing is just like everyone else does this wrong. Being, ooh, I'm hiding in the shadows, being like suspicious looking. I was like, great, yeah, you're a bad thief. Who's the most likely person to be a thief? It's the person like waiting in the shadows with their club. I was like, yeah, they're going to murder you. They're going to do this. I was like, let's take center of the room and just be in command. And then I rolled in like nat one there. I was like, well, fuck me. Oh, I you know, love honestly, that idea. It was so it's, good. That is it's not really a bad cool plan idea. to just kind of be chaotic. And then like whatever we do is just like, oh, they're just the weird group. Yeah. I also I then like, it's... like it did give Nell that moment of being able to like take charge of the group being like pull pull Rhea in, um, mm -hmm. like get Drac. And so I was like, okay, like maybe this hasn't totally backfired. Um, I think that was a good example of failing forward. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I think like what through Nell is that like, we hadn't talked about doing that. So when like Rhea started doing it, like Nell was just thinking like, what are they doing? Like what is happening? Like are, are <laughs> so so we hadn't talked about anything that we were no. going to do in that room. <laughs> Yeah, but we, we all know what we're going to walk said into. I thought Yeah, if that worked yeah. out, and I do think, like, as Ryan said, I think it did fail forwards decently. But I do think if that worked out, it would have been such a power move. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, like I definitely agree with that. Um, I just think that like the dice are telling a story that we are not meant to be criminal masterminds. So <laughs> the dice are telling a story that I'm only meant to do like two things a session. <laughs> <laughs> Both the oh. physical ones and the digital ones. Oh no! Brutal. <laughs> yeah, I. It's you have you have such a um, intense case of the DM's curse. Like I don't think I've ever seen it as bad as what you've got going on, and I feel really really bad for you. So, um, okay, we let's don't talk fight about these next session. Uh, well, uh, well. Uh, maybe. <laughs> I've been looking to shoot someone, but not not in this situation. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's talk about these trials. Um, so to try and win this bid from Cynric, we had to participate in three trials, pick up, delivery, and drop off. We will get to the drop off in a moment, but how did we feel about the first two? How did we really think we good. did? Really good. Honestly, I think that we did great those first two trials. You guys did phenomenal. Yeah. Can I just say, those automaton things so cool they reminded me of like dishonored i don't know if anyone's played that game but thank they, you they ryan in the episode. i i said that in the episode and everyone's like no i haven't played dishonored too i'm like Ugh. except for Adronimus who's watching uh and he validated me in the chat which i really appreciated um but yes thank you ryan that's exactly what i was thinking too yeah. For you. me, it was uh, Legend of Zelda Wind Waker when you're going through Ganon's fortress without your sword and stuff and you have to sneak uh, through the whole thing. Mm. I was like, oh, uh, yeah, there's crates. This is that vibe. Yep. Those are really well-designed encounters, I think. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Really yeah. Cool. I love the mirror thing. It's a classic D&D puzzle. Mm -hmm. Very good. You guys got yeah, it that was so fun. fast. It, like... I didn't, I had to think about it for a second, but yeah, like Denny stopped talking and you guys were both like, the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> the mirror. I thought I uh, that was a really, really fun one. Yeah, Logan was super clever. I thought putting the sword behind the mirror, mm -hmm. I, that was a, I would so never smart. have come up with it. So smart. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't think, I didn't get that. Yeah. What were you going to say, Adam? Uh, I thought that it would maybe be like three of us went through the mirror and saw the other room and three of us oh. had to stay kind of thing. And then the three that stayed would have to rearrange stuff. That's kind of why I, I left of... my token there. I was like, oh, well, I'll just, I can move stuff. That certainly would have <laughs> made it more difficult to. if we had yeah. to like describe to the other team who couldn't see the uh... correct. Yeah. Uh, I also had started yeah. doing it. And then we all just started like dragging the things. I was like, okay, we're just like doing yeah. this as like our character sees the thing and goes and fixes it. Which um, makes sense because we were just looking in the mirror. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we well, because he right away moved me to the other side. So I did think it was a situation yeah. where I was in another world and had to be like, okay, Abe, move the heavy thing over <laughs> here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. As someone um, who's bad at puzzles, I was very like impressed. Well done. Like I'm terrible at puzzles, just the worst. Too. So, you know, good job. Y'all killed it. I think everyone has like their own like strengths and weaknesses when it comes to puzzles like for me like i'm like good at word games but like logic puzzles not so much um yeah you were so fast on like the, the poem thing when it came up you were just like yeah i got it let's go next i love a word puzzle it's just like my favorite thing but like like we don't have to talk about it in in death but our home game you presented a logic puzzle to us anthony that literally made me cry with frustration because i felt so <laughs> stupid <laughs> oh, no. and, I, and then i cried more because i was like i'm being so dumb right now getting upset about this <laughs> like i am oh, it's so relatable <laughs> um, meanwhile like my friend was like oh this makes perfect sense i'm like what are you talking about it doesn't <laughs> it makes no sense <laughs> so there, there's puzzles out there for everyone um <laughs> Uh, yeah. Okay, let's get to it. We've been waiting long enough. Um, oh, did, we, no, did we talk about the second room? Did we talk about? I we mean, talked about the did we talk about how Drac tried to kill himself halfway through for no yeah. goddamn reason? You needed a distraction, and I, I gave could you make one. sounds. We could have yeah, been totally fine. They, we all yeah, could have just gone down the left. I could have kept making sounds on the other side. There's I was zero uh, risk distraction. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was kind of, uh, there was, there was, depending on how that went, I had two ways that I thought I was going to respond. And thankfully, everyone was safe. So I was pretty like, I was pissed at track. I wasn't <laughs> angry. But if someone got hurt, I'd been like, like, you don't trust me. 
and my trust was kind of broken there. It's like, cool, we don't trust each other in this group because we had a plan. And But thankfully, everyone was safe. So Rio was just like, okay, I'll just smack him with my weak, feeble, plus, like, heal yourself smack. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's so interesting. Do you think that's something Rio will ever, like, like, actually, like, after this, like, bring up with Drac? Like, or is it? No, because cause like I think, like, like, because no one was injured, like, it's one of those things, like, no one was hurt, it doesn't mm-hmm. really matter. Uh, but it's one of those Other things, like, Drac. I think if someone, Drac was hurt, well, but, like, he wasn't, it's like, like, you brought up upon yourself in that situation, you know, it's, yeah. like, if you're gonna... Yeah, like, if was... Nell got hurt, or if someone got, like, knocked out, or something, like, serious, mm-hmm. like, I would have been, like, yeah, Rio would have been a lot more angry it was partially that i th- i was uh wanting to give you a distraction so you could get out of the hole and two the chaos demon inside me wanted to do something crazy so i just oh, did yeah. something crazy <laughs> oh as a player so i love easily that. gotten yourself killed though i just like, and yeah, I, we had dynamic idea. lighting on so i really never saw i i didn't see where you were for a long time it wasn't until we like had gotten back to the doors that i was like oh actually drag's okay okay nice but I had no idea where you had gone. I was like, I hope I didn't there's a way out of there. I didn't know where I was there. going either. <laughs> I just <Yeah>. guessed. <laughs> yeah, I saw you dart into the darkness. I was like, is that a dead end? Is he <laughs> I just thought it was. fucked right now? Yeah. yeah. I was worried about that too. <laughs> I respect the play though. I respect it. <laughs> Although that moment when you cast Fog Cloud and they hit you regardless, I was like, oh, that's yeah, a big that was there. terrifying. <laughs> then I was like, yeah. oh. I I might be dead here. Dad. Especially the way Daddy said it. Yeah, yeah it they was, have but side. they have blind side. Blind side. <laughs> oh. yeah, that's a big oof right there. <laughs> that's a butt clencher. Um, I don't know if we'll ever get this mystery like answered like in character at all, but I'm so curious about like why one of them was an illusion and not the other one. I'm assuming like I'm assuming the other one wasn't because it, it hit you. So. Yeah. It did aggressively hit me for real damage. Yeah, so it's like, <laughs> why was the promise like, it's not an illusion? The idea was probably, like, could you get by both of them? He couldn't afford two, so he just or, made it. Like, also could be true. Like, those are probably you, very like, expensive. discern the difference between, like, the real threat and, like, one that's not, I suppose, yeah. as well? Um, I actually got nervous, like, when we, like, they had that, like, guard ta- like dummy guard table set up like a few of us like hid around it and part of me was wondering like are they gonna like dock points for being like well in a real oh. situation those guards might have actually been there so you couldn't have like just hid there you oh, know I so wonder. i was kind of thinking about that I, but like I at that point we were all leaving brought it up a couple times thought. i Denny know and he's, a few he's times, like oh yeah so you're like you're at the card table and you see like these like dummies sitting there i'm like oh, i feel like we're not supposed, oh. to, we're supposed to avoid that too so but like in the moment, I was like, Nell's move like speed is so slow. Like I just needed to like get out because I couldn't make it to any of the holes. Yeah. So yeah, we also like, stopped move- being stealthy after a certain point. Like obviously, it made sense. Yeah. But, like, Did we? I mean, you- I guess. Well, we were. Did we, we ever ran. start? We weren't crouch walking. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, but like- I still feel like the automatons didn't see most of us. They saw Drac. Well, I guess but what I, I mean is we were making noise. Away. Yeah, yeah I we, we were making. We ran noise. in a way that was making noise. Yeah. In in a so. in a non scenario situation, if we had ran through a warehouse and been spotted even once by a guard, it's like. You know, right, they but know. other than Drac, I don't know if we were spotted at all. Yeah. So no, I, was I like, don't I'm think not so. really sure. Which is why, another reason why I'm not sure why he ran across the warehouse. I'm gonna be real. I don't think we got the bid, but well, I don't think we care honestly, about getting the bid. Right? Do we need it? Thing. Yeah. I don't even know anymore, guys. Think, it's think, all a hot freaking mess. I think um, we got the info we need, and we just amass an army of city guard and just storm the hotel. I think that's the next step. Do we even need to be there? Can they not just handle this on their they own at this point, right? Themselves. Let's well, yeah. We just have to deliver the info. Mm. Yeah. Okay, it let's get into it. <laughs> <laughs> um. So this episode ended with an extremely intense scene <laughs> as we tried to figure out the last of Cynric's trials. Um. How does everyone feel about the choices that were made? <laughs> Should we explain the situation? Like re reiterate what yeah. was in the third room. 
Um, I actually have like it written down in my notes because I went over my notes again. Today. Okay, so we had a room with two individuals bound to chairs with sacks on their head and there's a skeleton on the floor. The voice tells us that someone who was in the room before us is the contact and that only one of the, whoever it is, is the only person that can come in contact with the liquid and survive. Um, and that we are allowed to interview the two people to figure out who it is. Um, at some point music plays from somewhere and it makes it seem like they can't lie to us. Um, so we ask them like a few questions, all of which seem very like confusing. And they're like, we are in a scenario, like we don't want to be here. We don't know how we got here. Like, we are not the contact. We will die if it comes in, if the substance touches us. Um, and then the skeleton hat, we can investigate it has a, one silver toe. Um, and then uh, we have a pretty significant full party meltdown, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're talking I about. We solved it in like the first minute Did or we? so. I yes, still we don't know what the answer is. <laughs> yeah, we I... went over to the skeleton, we looked at it, and Did the we skeleton realized... survive it being poured on it? See, no? that's the part that I'm like, survive. Yeah. It's the word it's survive just... that keeps throwing me off about this whole situation. I'm still not sure what the right answer was. Yeah, in watching yeah, it, I, like, think... I was very confused. Um, and I was like, they arrived, they arrived before us. And I was like, oh, that guy looks like he's He's but been here a while. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's yeah. all I got. And so it's one of those things where like <clears throat> all of like the past two days have been leading up to this point in terms of like, I don't think Nell has like fully understood anything that we were trying to do at any point. Like we fucked around with the contract, not understanding like what we need to do with that. Like, like there's all these like various crime things that have been kind of going like, eh, like confusingly. And it like culminated here. And it was just like, this trial doesn't make sense to me like the first two made sense for what they were but this one doesn't because in a real situation like this like the contacts would be real they wouldn't be two people who are like I am in a fake scenario and I don't want to be here please help me you know and I was like what is the game here like that Sinerk is trying to play with us because I am not understanding um Ryan and I ah. were talking before uh we started and I don't think there was a right answer. I think it was mm -hmm. you pour it on something in the room and then maybe he is going to ask us to explain ourselves mm. or something or like it shows something about you. Either you're okay with killing or you're a um, like detail oriented person and you'll pick apart a message and try to find hidden meaning and like, be more investigative or something like that or it's, yeah those are all very good points i don't know yeah. the whole thing just like made me so like absolutely infuriated like not like at denny specifically but just like at like the situation he was presenting us to i had a question for him but he's not here but it was just like did he mean to create such a moral dilemma for all of us that he think that was what's was going to happen oh, or yeah. should be like, oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> A hundred percent. Having played in his last game. Yep. yep. Yeah. Okay, yep. great. So he's just a sadistic piece of shit then. Is basically... Correct. Yes. You have to, to be a DM. <laughs> yeah. You did oh, oh, it's so absolutely infuriating. Um, uh, so Dallas actually had a question um, that she sent to me, which was, there was a moment where all of the characters picked a side on what was going to happen. Um, so how did your character make that choice and what were they feeling in the moment when they did? Working. <laughs> no, and I also I do want to know which side you would have gone on. But we like literally split the party into two groups at one. Yeah, point. and so like Ryan, like if you had been there, like what do you think like Gideon would have done? You know, I think Gideon would have sided with not pouring it on the people because they were they're innocent, as far as we know. Yeah. Yeah. I was more was... surprised at how. Rhea, how ruthless Rhea was about it. Yeah, uh, yeah, that, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because yeah, there's such a like kind, caring, nurturing character, uh -huh. but it was also this like. So I was like, I'm 600. Like I said this afterwards when we were talking. I'm, you know, even before the getting aged like 70 years, I'm like well over half a millennium. Mm -hmm. uh, I fought in a war. 
most of the people I love have died. Most of the people I've known in the world have died. Uh, I know all of you guys. I don't want you to die. Um, if we don't do something, we're stuck in there. I also didn't know if we did the wrong thing, would we be stuck in there? Um, so I was like, the, the not doing anything at all, which in my mind I had kind of, what I think Abe had said in there was, this is like, to see if we're willing to kill someone. I thought pouring it on the skeleton would be like a fuck you to the guy. Like, I'm not playing your game and he'd just leave us there. Uh, my thought was like, if, if it came down to like, we were going to pour it, I was going to pour it into the, like, the guard's gloved hand to hopefully be like, especially when like Dallas's information was like, Tuck Tuck wore leather gloves and handled the stuff. Um, I was like, okay, maybe this is like the way to pour it on one of them. But yeah, it was uh, like, they are a bit of a calculated person um, and they are very much like willing to do the like, you know, a lot has been sacrificed to get the world to where it is. And they've been involved with parts of that, that it's kind of hard for them to like a life that they don't know it's like someone has to die here and they're just going to make a choice. Yeah. And like, I could under, like Nell does understand that, like where you're coming from, but she absolutely could not like agree with it because like, I was trying to say this, like, like in like the, in the moment too, it was like, it makes zero sense to me that like, if someone has to die for this, like that we would like make it one of these innocent people because it's like like that's why i was thinking about like oh we should have like a code word or something of when we're like okay we're out you know um because it's like how far are we willing to go with this like ruse of but what will we have done for the bid if well, we and that's were the thing, out like, in this moment well and that was the thing that was like really difficult because um like i think now might have been able to hand like hold it together a bit better in that situation if like she didn't know that her brother was potentially on the other side of that wall like it like like the moment I realized it was him um like any kind of like ruse that we were playing was gone for me so I truly wasn't thinking about getting stuck underground I was just thinking about like the moral implications of it and just like couldn't like handle it so yeah no and that was like in like the later bit when we had that moment of like will we free these people like i was willing to do whatever nell wanted in there because i was like i realize this is hard for nell and this is pushing nell too far so i was like if you were like we're doing the good thing Rio would have been like cool i'm behind you like i that's kind of where you know. abe was i don't know if i communicated it but like no you I'd... really did well just like we can make this choice but we are fighting our way out of here with these two in tow and they might die yeah. anyway and i think like the fact that it was like a that said it like i don't know like i think it was enough to kind of like cut through kind of like what was going on with now to realize like okay we, we still have something that we need to get done here and like it fucking sucks but like i needed like someone to be that straightforward with me i think after like everything that had happened so that like felt like a very small moment but it was very impactful to me um it still fucking sucks though like god i hate it i hate it so much uh, um i think else? my choice there was uh totally based on morality too just like mm -hmm. like drac was raised to you know take care of people and his parents taught him to you know look after other people first before himself so if he sees two innocent, as far as he can tell, innocent people tied to chairs, he's not going to hurt them. They're defenseless. There's no honor in that. Yeah, I think, you know, I, I don't think Elowen is like righteously moral necessarily, but it just didn't make sense. Like just none of the options in that scenario made sense. And I think I think there were three options in my mind. It was either these people or the skeleton. And it was just like, you know, none of this makes any goddamn sense. So we might as well just pour it on the skeleton because... You know, if we don't have to kill someone, we better not. But yeah. And also, Drac was thinking, we have what we came here for. We know who's behind this. We just need to progress and keep progressing until we get the hell out of here and we can deliver yeah. what we know. 
That's a good thing that Logan brought up, though. I didn't really think about, like, is, was pouring on the skeleton, like, a giant, like, fuck you, like, we aren't playing your game kind of thing. Because that could have, I, I didn't even think about it in that scenario, but that could have been a problem. If, yeah. If our goal was just, like, let's leave now. We're about to find out. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. it might be a problem. <laughs> I think it's a problem anyways. Yeah. Like, going into the next episode where do we all think we stand are we all about to be tbk'd by um zarze <laughs> or do you think we can make it out <laughs> i still think we can maybe talk our way out of this yeah uh, you mentioned that at the end and i was like kind of go over, going over it as i was like brushing my teeth and gearing for bed i was like okay okay like what did i actually say like i don't think i did i say the guard no. anything about the guards out loud so no, i don't think, so. I, think I think you think... just said like the thing you that we came here that. to do yeah so it's yeah, clearly so like I we're not here for like, the bid, really, but I think we can still play this off like we're here for Cowl. Yes. For some so other I was, thing. that's what I was like, I was going over it in my mind. I was like, okay, what am I going to say if I need to talk my way out of this? And that's what I was thinking. I'm like, so we came here as citizens for Cowl. Like, this is like the, what I'm going to try and like <laughs> claim um, to like get intel on whoever this other person is that's trying to like take over their like playground essentially because he wants to like kind of suss him out see how much of a threat he is so like yeah we'll go for the bid and really it's just like we're like figuring things out for cowl um and so being like they like cowl made it pretty clear like they are thieves like they're not like murderers and stuff so it's like that stands up to me still that we would be like really morally conflicted being like cowl wouldn't want us to murder someone like that's not what we do like we're just thieves especially when it comes to smuggling like we wouldn't do that um so i think we can spin it still hopefully but i guess all of our past like what we've done so far <laughs> might potentially fuck up i mean also is cowl gonna hate us if we do that well i'm not gonna say his name although i do think it's so stupid that he named the thieves go back to himself <laughs> but um like I won't, i'll just say like the leader whoever like yeah. But uh oh well, sorry, Cowl. Like you were <laughs> we're you never weren't there, but come back to the city. <laughs> oh well. It's so far hasn't been treating us very well, so it's honestly fine. Mm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I've got some ideas like if it turns into a fight, what it like what I think I'll do at least. Uh and if that lie doesn't work, I have like one other idea. I'll save it for the table. <laughs> I, got I really idea. hope it doesn't turn into a fight. I'm pretty tapped, y'all. James oh. gonna live up to his fake oh. name. I kind of want to stab some of these people, so I'd be down for a fight. Like, I would be down for a fight if Zarze has fucked off and she's <laughs> not around anymore. But if she is there, we are all fucked. That's like, but then true. she can choke me. <laughs> <laughs> we all want that. But unfortunately, I think um, it would be a TPAK if we, like, it would be like a really sexy one, but it would still. Um, <laughs> yeah. you How know did your we game add sexy TPK? Sexy TPK. <laughs> Oh no, oh. don't kill us all. Oh, oh stop. <laughs> so, serious um, finale uh, next time? Yeah, sounds like it. Mm -hmm. cool. Yeah. Serious finale? Danny's just yeah, was... DMing. You know? yeah. We all come back as morally gray characters. Yep. Yeah. Well, I feel like the Mary um, Hall gang might be on our side. If, if a fight okay. does break out, we might have some allies here. At the very least, Nell's brother. And maybe that guy yeah. that we helped out before as well, right? We have a rapport with stuff. him. So we got like two people over there that I think would fight with us, maybe. And the Anthony, other gang you might had... be dead. Yeah, they didn't, they didn't seem very room. confident yeah. to begin with. They might be dead, yeah. I think, Anthony, after the session, you had kind of like a theory of how you thought like things might play out if it did turn into a fight or like what's happened with the other gangs during their trials. Like, oh, he? yeah, I was thinking like Mary Hall is there. They made it through, which means and if they're, they're not killers, you know, they did the skeleton toe thing, too. Um, the Shen Karai probably just dumped it on a random person. They didn't care. Mm -hmm. And then the Storm Guard also really aren't killers. They beat people up. Like they rough them up and steal their money, but they don't kill them. So I think they didn't even get to the last trial. I think they I got. I think they're still in the first trial. <laughs> like they can't figure this puzzle out. Well, I oh meant to God, ask I would love Denny that. 
at the end of that session as well is how many members of each of the other teams are still here. Because he did mm. say that we might lose individual people. Like, I wonder if everyone from those two gangs made it through. Mm. Yeah, he also did not confirm if, like, he's like, oh, you see a few members from Mary Hall, but he did not yeah. confirm if my brother was with them. So I I don't know that. <laughs> yeah. Just, Fucking stressful. I feel your like... brother's for sure with him. He wouldn't just dangle wouldn't your just, brother in front of yeah. you and then just be like, "Oh yeah," and he died in there. So you know, forget he about it. He died off dead, screen. Though. He he might just be like, like just still in there. You know, like I don't know if it means like if they didn't come through, if like maybe he's I don't know. I have no idea. Mm-hmm. So I feel like I think I, I I feel like each gang failed on a different trial in some way. Like mm-hmm. I don't know. Like I feel like the Shankarai gang like. They, they probably fought the automatons. Yeah, they probably killed the automatons, but they probably lost some people doing so. Yeah, the Mary Hall gang probably failed the, one of the puzzles. I don't know, maybe the first one, and then maybe the uh, uh, the 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 storm crow. It's not storm crow, storm, storm guard. guard. <laughs> maybe they failed the. I don't know. Maybe they each failed the, the automat. The automatons was a rough one. Well, and it's hard to say too, like what is like like passing in that scenario, like what Sinerk is gonna think is like full marks because it's like, okay, if you stealth passed, is that better than like destroying them? Because then that that like leaves evidence to know like someone was in here. That's right. You know, so is it better mm-hmm. to have like snuck through? Like I personally think that we made the right call, like leaving them be, but I think so too. I don't know. We I mean also like and like pretty quickly. Yeah. And I felt like we took a long time in like the the final one, but yeah, yeah. for the, we move fast through the first two, but yeah. yeah, I don't think there's like a right or wrong to these because like he's not like it wasn't a race. He never said it's who gets out here the fastest. He wants to True. see everyone's skills, yeah. mm-hmm. and we've shown like a versatile amount of skills. We're smart, we are sneaky, we're resourceful. Um, until the last room, don't know what we showed there. Um, <laughs> we're willing to really pick apart the words of something <laughs> for a long time. We'll and, think about it a lot. Yeah, we'll think about it, um, which maybe is like being careful. But, you know, I think in the last one, it's like, you know, Shen Cry goes there and dumps it on someone. What they showed is like, you know, they will just take action. Like, you know? Yeah. You know, the thing we didn't show is fighting. And I wonder yeah. if there is like a secret fourth like trial or something now because there really well, wasn't anything what about I'm, fighting yeah that's what i'm wondering because it's like um if that truly was the only three like there's a best case scenario situation where it's like okay like this gang wins it does that mean that like the other gangs are it's all gonna be like then murdered for having knowledge this like event ever happened or is it more likely like he doesn't want to piss off like all these like rival gangs because that would bring a lot of heat from like because they're all over the continent mm-hmm. be, bring a lot of heat on Cynric. um because I, I doubt like any of the lieutenants are here so they're gonna know what happened so it's like ideally like whoever wins the contract everyone walks after that but you might be right in the sense that like okay the final one is like all fight each other I, I, I do think there's a good chance of that also because of the way that he worded things. We weren't allowed to fight each other before going into the rooms, but he did say you might after or like something along those lines. Yeah, yeah. I was about yeah. to like, say that. Yeah. No violence yeah. until the bit is done or something. Yeah. Something. Something. So I was like, there's also the chance that he gives, like, he plans to give the bid to, like, one of the groups right away. He's like, cool, Mary Hall, you got it. With the idea being that the Shen Cry will just try and fight them. And, like, everyone will fight, and it'll be who survives at the end. Cool, you're, you know, you showed that you were stronger and you were able to get through my trials. And if, like, if that happens, like, what are we planning on doing? Like, are we just going to try and, like, fight the other king? Or it's like, do we try and just leave? GTFO. How yeah. are we going to leave? I, we're we're hundreds of feet it's underground. A feet underground. Do we know how to yeah. use that elevator? I doubt it. We'll figure it out. Did we see <laughs> yeah, the I also like, have... Magic have... Or anything? Yeah. Yeah. I also what had if... an idea what of if, like... What if, what if Sarzai, Sarzai or whatever her name is like... Like, because we she wasn't in the room that we could see at least. Like, what if she's gone back up the elevator? So like, if anyone like tries to leave, she's just like waiting at the top. I thought she was in the room. Was she, I don't remember yeah, I him mentioning was. her. Maybe he did. I don't remember. I think I at the very stressed. end, he like mentioned that 
she like walked up to Sinric and whispered something in his ear or something like that. I don't. I thought it was just that he was playing his flute at the far end. Yeah, he was playing his flute for sure. Um, So I had like this, like, oh, if we had done things differently, like, what could we have done? And like after we were brought down, he was like, "This is your last chance to like turn around, go back, and stuff." I was like, "What if we just we should went have up? just gone back? We know where left? the lever is, <laughs> and we pulled the lever again, and then cut the rope, and then just told the police. We're just like, hey, town's guard, town's guard, they're trapped hundreds of feet underground. <laughs> yeah, they that was my like, like, oh closest thought. No, I, I that wouldn't have worked. I don't think, but that's a great thought. <laughs> should... yeah, they so gotta good. have Bye, another Denny. way out. <laughs> There has oh, to be yeah. another There's way out. Many, I'm sure. Such a yeah. funny fuck you, Danny. Though, be like, we're not going <laughs> to take part of this shit. Later. Yeah, fuck you, Danny. I know you spent <laughs> after hours he was worried it would be a short session too. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, we're yeah. not going to do any of your shit. It was like the longest session we've ever had. No, I think the last one was longer. Yeah, it was pretty long. We've had anyway, some long ones. Where do you y'all? Where do y'all think we are? Because we traveled quite a ways. Yeah, we tra- oh. We walked for 30 mm-hmm. minutes under several hundred feet underground. Let me pull up the map. Now I'm curious. Well, I don't think I mean, there was anything else out there. And we walked further than that to get out of the city, right? Yeah, well, it's so either like we just know. back in the city or we've gone yeah, further. Yeah, that's wondering. Like, we don't know what direction we were walking. Um, yeah. Here, turn order. Because, um, okay, so the orchards are to the. Oh, Danny's here. Okay. Oh, we can ask him. Connecting to audio. Yeah. Danny, where we are we? Danny, Danny, Danny. 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 Danny, Danny. Danny, Danny. Danny. Good evening. We were, we were saying really oh, nice wow. things about you. Don't worry. Don't worry. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> What's going on, buddy? Not a whole lot. Figured I could jump in here for a short bit. Um, we were just trying to theorize if, like, like where we like are under, like, right now. Like, it. Like, like where so we, we went walked. underground and then we walked for 30 minutes. So did we walk yeah. back kind of to the Into outskirts the of Valum Bridge or did we go yeah. further? There really isn't anything out there. Not, not that we know of. Personally, I don't want to know right now. <laughs> well, we're planning our yeah. escape. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're going to pop like, up. How yeah. fucked we are, if at all. <laughs> so. Super, oh. super dead. Super, I, super fucked up. I had some questions for you, Denny. Yeah, but I, you know, I figured I'd better pop in here just in case you guys had questions for me. Well, I did, but then everyone else who was in your previous campaign answered it for me, which is <laughs> the answer was that you're a sadistic piece of shit. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> their words. <laughs> Yeah, there were. It's not mine. Absolutely not. No, it was just like, did you like realize you were creating such a moral dilemma for us with that final trial? Like, did you think it was going to go that um, poorly? <laughs> <laughs> um, I didn't think it was going to last as long as it did, but I knew it was going to be a moral quandary. Absolutely. Excellent. Excellent. Great. But, That's all I, I had mean, for you, some, if I'm being honest. Well, there, there are three other factions that did that same test. And does that not make you wonder how they performed? Yeah, we were talking we were actually about just talking what we about that. thought the other groups yeah. did. Yeah, because we were talking about how we also didn't think there was a right answer. We think it was just yeah. make a choice and like that. You know, well, then have to just justify like, it. Uh, yeah, because like so much of it didn't make sense in terms of like if this was a real delivery, the two people we were trying to like we we're trying to suss out wouldn't be like we are in a scenario and we are in danger please help us like they wouldn't just like be straight up like this is all fake you know so like that's what really like confused me but also it's like how can a contact be a skeleton <laughs> so it's like i just uh need to know what the fuck Sinric is doing because i don't like it i think we're gonna find out yeah all right we'll find out. and after he murders us <laughs> yeah we're also theorizing that there's actually going to be a fourth trial, which is that uh, he's going to assign the bid and then be like, all right, fight each other. <laughs> fight for it. So, yeah, we have a we have a strong suspicion we're going to have to try and like fight our way through the other gangs. So like even if he doesn't do that, we still might have to fight our way through the other gangs. Well, yeah, there's a good chance we're fighting the other gangs. Yeah. I think we've all we... got some pent up rage to stab out on I them. I got one <laughs> yeah. spell slot. 
Mm-hmm. Ready so did to go. You, did you say that Sarze was in the room like, at, at the very end there? Yes, Sarze is with Sinric. We're fucked, guys. We're gonna die. That's the thing. I think Sarze is strictly there to protect Sinric. Like, if a fight does erupt, I think Sarze is like strictly protecting the money, which is Sinric. So I think okay. we'll be okay. But I'm scared of her. <laughs> just don't. Just don't. Don't even look at Sarze, okay? Like, don't even <laughs> acknowledge that they're there. If a fight breaks out. There's probably going to be some description that Denny does being like, yeah, she like fucking like flips over a dude and like guts him as he rushes at her and like fucking like does a tornado sweep and like wipes out like five dudes. And it's like, yeah, because they all ran at her. And it's like, yeah, we're, we're, we're just staying in the corner, <laughs> kind of staying alive. We don't want to fight you. Denny just goes like super ham on this descriptions of the massacre. <laughs> uh, we won't look at her. She stabs us in the back. Yep. If I can't see oh, the blade, <laughs> can't hurt me. I don't we need to plan the next session. Apparently, we'll just skip it then. Uh, <laughs> terrified. Um, yeah, I only had one one more question, um, which is that this campaign has had a lot of morally gray situations so far. Far are these moments something your character is comfortable with, and what about you as the player? Have we had a lot of morally gray? I feel like we've had maybe maybe not. From the perspective of a good character, yes, a lot of the decisions yeah. we've made are morally gray. <laughs> um, yeah. For Drac, it's like he's obviously raised in this uh, culture of you know preserving balance, and you know good and evil are just means to balance each other out. But he's a good person, so doing bad to achieve good still feels kind of weird to him because he hasn't done a lot a lot um but he's getting a little bit more used to it this last quandary was did not help with that progression but <laughs> he's trying yeah i think i mean i talked about it before about my character you know it's kind of a means justify the end mentality um yeah and so for this, I think my character, you know, realizes and probably has within their life had to make choices that have been realizes. Like the... <laughs> realize. Oh, boo, 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 boo. <laughs> <laughs> all right, disconnect from call. That was, that was awful. <laughs> I'm, Leave I'm me gonna here. Retract well, this has been fun. Yeah, this has been nice. Thank you guys <laughs> so much for coming. This has been after party. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, you know. I don't think the choices have been anything that they're, they're, you know, nothing's comfortable about what, like, that choice that they were willing to make last time was. But it wasn't like they're going to sit here and now have a moral dilemma about it. Um, and as a player, I love things like this. <laughs> yeah, I think I think Elowen, like we were talking about before, is not ridiculously morally righteous. But, um, you know, she has a goal and... Uh, she's because she do a lot of things to achieve that goal of hers um i think though she has lived a fairly sheltered life up to this point so there is still like like a ripping a person in half in front of her is shocking uh and you know the idea of dumping a liquid that will kill a person is not something she's experienced a lot in her life but if it was like you know we have to do this to continue she'd do it I just didn't think we had to do it in that case. Hmm. Yeah, I think I think Gideon like he's sheltered too, um, and I feel like he was brought up to be sort of a good person, but he's just been through a lot, and he just doesn't want to be that for somebody else. You know, like he doesn't want to be somebody else's bad day, um, or bad event or anything like that. Um. So like, you know, when it came to if I were present for the session, um, he would definitely have been like, we can't just kill somebody without just reasoning yeah. for it. Like, don't get me wrong, if, if if you charge at me with a knife, I don't care who you are. But like, <laughs> you know, yeah, if you're sure. tied to a chair. Eh, <laughs> it's a problem. I'm concerned. 
Yeah, I did. I did not want to speak on Gideon's behalf in that scene whatsoever. So he very much fell as a fly on the wall in that one. I'm thankful. Yeah, that's that's more than fair. <laughs> Danny, you've done a great job, like playing Gideon. I just want to let you know that, like in the moment, like the small RP moments that like you've had, like my favorite one, I think, was like the first time you had to do it. Um, and like he just somebody asked him something that was like kind of personal, and he just deflected about talking about eggs. And I was like, that is perfect. That is literally Gideon. <laughs> just making breakfast. Like, so Gideon, like, how do you feel about this? Can't go wrong with eggs. Just keeps <laughs> like Gideon, you're you're so good. <laughs> well, thank you, Ryan. Uh, you 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 made such a good character. Thank you. <laughs> how does Abe feel? Uh, I think for Abe, it's about making the choice that seems to make the most sense in the context of the situation. Um, you know, he's, he's fallen in with a very, uh, I, <laughs> the way I describe it to Natalie is that we're a whole bunch of goody two shoes. Um, and so, hey, <laughs> because he's fallen in with them, there's that, you know, big swing to being, you know, good. Um, but I think, for him, I mean, it's kind of the same idea with Malden. It's like mortal morality is just inconsequential to him. He's like, well, does this make sense in the situation? Yes. Okay. That's like the situation with the, for him, pouring the argon voludium on the skeleton didn't seem like it made sense in the situation. So it's like, well, that's probably not the right answer. Doing this might not be the right answer, but it is probably. Uh, a way of getting out of this situation. Um, it seems like a really to... um, freeing way to think. <laughs> yeah. What's Chaotic. correct versus what's right. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, but same as Logan, like I, as a player, you know, I, I love my debates about morality and right and wrong. So. Yeah. I'm a fan. Yeah. 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 And um, that, and that was something that came up in the session zero too, was uh you guys had mentioned, well, a couple of you had mentioned, like, we want more morally gray. Like, funny enough, we're, you, what was said to me was, like, we very much had, we were the good guys and there was the bad guys. You guys have since fallen into being the good guys again. But there is a bit more questioning of what are you willing to do as the good guys? Yeah, it's Where's fucking brutal. <laughs> When Denny TPKs us, we can all come back as the okay guys. Right. <laughs> we'll all be high charisma rogues. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to it. It and just make makes things a lot. Paladin. Like all of our backup characters are just like super high charisma. Yeah. Yeah. And I think like the, the situations that we've been presented with so far that have been like the hardest for me are like partly like the reason why like I never had any interest in playing a paladin before because I was like I don't want to have to like have a moral quandary every single time something comes up like it's way easier to like go with my natural instinct which is just like what's the most interesting thing to do <laughs> and, like obviously like I don't think any of my characters have been like outright evil or anything but like they might have been like a little bit more um selfish in certain situations and it sucks it's fucking like a brain teaser like every like role play session I'm like what would I do here? And it works, I think, having like Nell be very naive because she also doesn't know. <laughs> so, mm. Yeah. Well, we, you and I actually talked about that, Christy, in the Speak Dicey podcast Paladin episode. Mm -hmm. Like we talked about like Paladin is a really challenging class to role play just because Ooh, like when, yeah. when you're presented with scenarios like this, like what do you do? <laughs> like, it's a tough, it's a tough cookie to crack. And I have, I love watching and slash playing paladin it's so interesting to me yeah it's been very interesting and like i said before like it's gonna be curious to see like how things progress with Raynard and like how it changes like my paladin elements so mm -hmm. i don't know oh boy well i could talk about this for like two more weeks until we can just get back <laughs> in there because i'm <laughs> fucking stressed um did you have any did questions any yeah uh, well, the unfortunate thing is I don't know what questions have been asked, so I probably won't ask any questions here today. Um, I think we were, we were quite thorough, I feel like. All right. 
But um, I have two more questions. If Danny well, doesn't have any, I might also have one. Ooh, Wait. fuck wow. yeah! Let's go. All right, this is a spicy after party. <laughs> <laughs> so many, so many questions. <laughs> I love that Adam did the salt. And yeah, like, I went up, you went down. <laughs> <laughs> so cute. It was the the creation of 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 man. The salt. Of spice out. <laughs> he was salting the meatball. I was making the meatball. Yeah. Okay. That's how that works, babe. Okay, come on. Something Anyways, okay. Uh, I'm so sorry, guys. <laughs> I'll, I I gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> what if i actually just left to go to the washroom <laughs> funny anywho uh okay first question for dallas Hello. how so Willela wants you to Ooh, yeah. find out the origin of some deities what do you think that's about eh i have so many thoughts go ahead sorry do you, do you have thoughts because i don't i don't know why she wants this can you tell me why does she want it ryan are you sure okay all right. I, I have no idea. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just, whatever. I'll do what Willie asked me okay. to do. It doesn't sound I like am that big of a problem, right? I am so sus of Willela now. <laughs> so sus. Willela's like, hey, find out how these things ascended to godhood, please and thank you. <laughs> no. Oh, That's true. an interesting point. Willela's not a god. <laughs> true. I didn't even think about that. I am sus of Willela. <laughs> So, you know, oh. <laughs> that's my thoughts. Whatever. It, I don't know if the truth. wants to take over the moon because she was specifically interested in Mota. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She was like, notice notice how, how well, it was like, hey, you know, there are gods that are like set, you know, they're like a thing. <laughs> they're like uh -huh, the earth. Uh -huh. Like, you know, that's not changing. Like, what am I going to do about that? But then they were like, hey, there are gods that do change and people do move into those positions. So like, can you like tell me how? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I mean, well, Layla wants like a middle management position, you know, <laughs> they're like lining up. Like, hey, can you like dig up some dirt on this guy? I want to see if I can kick him out of his job. Yeah, you know, maybe next they'll be like, hey, do you know what celestials are like vulnerable to? It's a weird question. I don't know, like, I'm just trying to, to, to do some like personal <laughs> research here like you know i just just trying to trying to figure something out here you figure mm. out how to kill the arquette for me you know? <laughs> i know strange question yeah. so weird right <laughs> well, but like as they are like a servant of the arquette it is like they serve a god that is that type of god that someone yep. steps into the role as you know last last campaign but like the specifics of like someone became a permanent god Mm. that's what like you know maybe they are sus but i don't think they're like wanting to just become like the arquette because that's a no. limited time position someone eventually <laughs> needs to refill it uh but like you know what if we got some more moons in there or something they're sus well even just like that's a lot of power to not burn out when you're a god that's supposed to burn out mm -hmm. so like i can imagine being that Walela would be sus of uh I forgot the name of the moon god. Uh, Mota. Mota, uh, thank you. I did it. Right, but what would be so bad if Walela became the moon? I don't know. I don't know. What, what's yeah. Walela's retirement plan? I don't know. Okay. You know, Thanos like snapped his fingers and was like, I'm gonna start a farm after I'm done when I'm done. <laughs> I don't know what Willela plans to do, okay? <laughs> I feel like being a god is like, you know, end of your career kind of. Like, it's not <laughs> retirement true, per se. It's like. That's true. Uh, it's like the. It's what you do when you're a 14 year old girl and you have nothing <laughs> better to do with your life. You're that's like, right. I'm going to go become a god now. Yeah, after that's you right. save the world. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Just can't paint one thing. <laughs> <laughs> yep, 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 yep. Dallas, yeah. do you have anything else you want to add to that? No, honestly, I hadn't really thought about it. We were doing a lot of other stuff. But maybe, yeah. Hmm. Like what? <laughs> what other things were going on? <laughs> yeah. Just <Fine>. nothing. <laughs> I think maybe. Yeah. Well, I kind of right. need her on my side, though, so. Mm -hmm. For now, until she betrays you, inevitably. I love it. I love it. Oh, boy. Okay, but, anyways. but, you know. 
she can betray me after I get my body back. <laughs> then we're fine. There you go. Optimism. We're all gonna fight gods eventually. <laughs> <I'm> just... <laughs> just End of the like... campaign. Each person pick a god to have a fist fight with. I've already got dibs <laughs> on Malvin. I don't really want to fight my five headed dragon god. Thanks. <laughs> You yeah, don't, don't have to pick them. Whatever. I said you can just I fight Fyra. Like... <laughs> sure, I'm I... gonna beat up my grandma. That's fine. <laughs> I really don't want to have fisticuffs with whatever is watching over Balesville. Um... You don't have to pick your god. You just have to pick a god. See, well, Abe's not, not able to pick. <laughs> well, but it's like the one like 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 that's related to your situation. Abe Remember doesn't get to pick Eldritch Horror his is watching over Balesville. Picked... Yeah, whatever the hell that is. Yeah. All right, oh, question uh, two. Like... <laughs> what do y'all think of uh, Sinric having some Argon Voludium just lying around? That's pretty rare, right? That was basically is... my question. That is interesting. Oh. Yeah. That's a problem. And the fact that it's like it's available to be used like in this kind of trial situation. So it's like not even like saving it for something like more important. Um I don't like. Yeah, I that. had some thoughts on that after. Was uh, like, what would happen if, like, you know, someone just like took, like, you know, ripped off a part of Abe's arm? Is there a way to like deprocess that back into its original state? And so I bet you there's some dead Argon folks in this closet. Oh yeah, Argon That's folk are I... being kidnapped. Well, Starborn. Yeah. Oh. Starborn oh, as a whole. Yeah. 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 So wow, she's all look connected. at Danny. Is he doing it here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, such a good, good poker face. Oh, look at those eyebrows! Look at those eyebrows go! Huh. Damn it! Oh my god, I didn't even think about that. No, me neither. Ooh, I don't like his ooh, methods. It's all coming but god together. Damn the results! Is it all connected? Yeah. Is it? Or are we just like overthinking everything? Either one could be possible. <laughs> yes. You think this guy just has a bunch of bugs somewhere? Oh, oh my god, we're Probably. gonna fight more bugs. What if it's walls. like, okay, here's the fourth trial to the bid, and then there's all these bugs start coming out of the walls, and be like. Huh. <laughs> I can't. But then he's like, I don't know where these bugs came from. Or like, why do they just keep showing up? <laughs> it's us. It's us. Yep. Ooh, fuck. Yeah, okay. I actually had two questions as we've had had questions come up. Uh, mm -hmm. Which one was because we we're kind of talking about like you know what Rhea has seen in in their past, but like how much death has your character? seen before this or been involved with like where does that lie we kind of have an idea with both like abe and Rhea, but the other characters we actually don't really know hmm. i would say probably none other than like natural causes within the village of like the older members like i think it was very like kind of sheltered in that situation so she definitely like hasn't caused anything like the worst was like freezing her family but didn't kill anyone um, drac has Ari. heard much of death from previous eras in his people's culture and he certainly experienced danger being a hunter and all that but i don't think he's seen death firsthand until he started adventuring Barring what happened during the event, which has been repressed extremely deep, we, there's untold potential there for death that Gideon has witnessed. Um, uh, he, you know, he probably went hunting with his dad when he was a kid, uh, so he's seen animals get killed, shot, um, and uh, he did some bounty hunting for a time, short time. He probably witnessed maybe one or two deaths then. Um, but yeah, I think most of it is unfortunately very repressed behind that day. So mm, yeah, most of the death he's seen has been fairly recent, unfortunately. Yeah, I don't think Elowen has seen a lot of death either. Despite being alive, both the Desolation and the Ascendancy she was very young during the desolation and I, she didn't fight during the ascendancy. Um, I think, yeah, just natural deaths she's seen. 
Um, I, I imagine that she has like taken like hirelings and gone on like many adventures throughout the wilder throughout her life as well as she's tried to track down information and stuff. Perhaps mistakes have happened on those trips, but I can't imagine it has been much. Holy shit. I just got the idea. It's like, we should run a one shot of you all playing like hirelings of Elowen on one of these quests. <laughs> I, I mean, always imagined that the brutally. hirelings didn't <laughs> like her very much. It's a Call of That'd Cthulhu adventure. <laughs> I don't think she did it often. I kind of feel like most people have always felt like she slows them down when she tries to take them on adventures. Because prior to having any sort of magical power, she's just a, like a nine year old girl. And if they're like trying to like climb shit, she's like help like i don't i don't think most hirelings have uh enjoyed having her around that explains your distaste for being treated as a nine-year-old girl yeah i don't like it <laughs> yeah. i mean like, if you had enough money you could have um someone like help you with those situations like maybe carry you around and like um like a sack a like a position <laughs> Or something. <laughs> oh, sorry. What was, what was the word you said? I'm not familiar. <laughs> it was um. It was uh. Fuck you, Christy. Uh, oh, <laughs> I don't think that's what I heard. I'm getting some static from your mic, Dallas. Um, so I don't know. <laughs> yeah. No, not much. And yeah. I think that's that's why I think yeah. Suddenly, like murdering people is like a oh. So that's the thing that's happening in my life now. Is it cool? Hey. Right. This is obviously from many sessions ago, but then was the fight at the train tracks like the first time Nell and Drac had ever killed anyone? Drac didn't kill anyone there. Yeah, you you knocked them out. But like, yep. has Drac <laughs> killed anyone yet? I don't think I have either. I don't know. I haven't killed a person. Yeah. But- I assumed Gideon had killed probably one or two people prob- before the campaign. Like he tr- he was a merchant that traveled alone. He would yeah. have had to protect himself from bandits or something probably once or twice. Um, yeah. Who was the first person I killed in that fight? Was it the one that Abe was trying to reap? That's the worst. <laughs> it might have been. I'm um, pretty sure it was. I have to go back in and uh, rewatch that VOD. <laughs> oh, I just Uh-oh. realized something. Drac has killed somebody prior to the campaign. Oh. His mom! <laughs> no, one of the rumors that Danny and I came up with was oh, that Drac right. electrocuted someone to death when he was attacked by bandits on the road. Oh, fuck yeah. That's, that's awesome. Right. Wow. That's <laughs> I metal. think I had like, that one. That's fucking like, metal. What the four, like, our characters met? No. <laughs> How soon before? <laughs> It's like, a that day. it's like just eating <laughs> stew in the fucking pub. Like, hello, new friend. I Maybe. Man. I don't know. You'll never wow. guess what this burnt meat smell is. It's not the stew. <laughs> Ooh. But yeah, that's interesting now thinking about how, like, if I think that's accurate that the first person I would have killed was whoever that, I can't remember his name, but that uh, person that Abe was trying Wilson? to get. Wilson? Yeah. No, that. Ooh. Ooh, what does that mean? Did he knew kill, that off the top of his head. Did you kill the masked cultist before you killed Wilfin? Because you like force blast him. Uh, I don't know. Let me go through my notes. Might I don't is. know if I run it You down. did a paladin smite at one point. Or was that that guy? Yeah, who, that was the natural 20 paladin smite on Wilfin. That was oh, Wilfin. Okay. Yeah. So it was like, there, but then there was the, the masked individual where you guys found the, uh, the, the mysterious hmm. note. That was like, after. That was after. Like because I I I did the cal the Kaladin. <laughs> I did the Paladin smite on Wilfin and then like broke off because like it was afterwards the Abe was so mad he bisected a person. Cause I, I had left, so I didn't see that because I had gone over and like then started shooting some magic on people on the hills and one of them was um Flavio. So yeah. 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 <laughs> I also had a oh, stupid Adam, that's so interesting. <laughs> what does that mean? What does that mean for our characters? It's a question that doesn't get asked much in D&D. How does your character feel about killing? Yeah. But like and how does that change? The first person I killed was like like one of the first people that like... That I was supposed you, to. Like like that Abe was supposed to. 
Ooh. Sounds like uh, Nell might become worthy. <laughs> Fuck you, <laughs> Denny. You won't believe what Adam fucking said to me no, earlier. No, he was like, oh, no, I no, think like, up again. Um, he's like, I think like Nell's brother might be worthy and I'm going to have to take him in the fight in the next session. <laughs> Uh, don't say that. Don't say don't say things it. like that. Yeah, if I hear the Falcon, on Denny's face right and now. then we said that would actually ruin the party, and that can't happen. Yeah, that would like fully be like a, like a campaign, like and like I don't even know. Also, Denny, you never said specifically. You just said there were a few members of the Mary Hall gang. Like, was my was the other Goliath? Was my brother there in the room? I don't know. We'll have to we'll have to take a closer look once we get into the next. <laughs> I knew you were gonna do that too. I was like, I was like, oh, I'm gonna be so stressed thinking about this next two weeks. And everyone else is like, well, of course he'd be there. He wouldn't just like take him away like that quickly. And I'm like, would he oh, not? Would he, <laughs> Speaking of lines that might not mean anything, the first person we've seen that was worthy was Will Finn, and now this might be here. <laughs> Feeling Stop. better about my chances. It's only Finn's <laughs> taste. The realm of so Finn. Much. It's all fish people. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely i hate this okay well well this has been cheery have we discussed everything we need to discuss because okay, you have one more question right yeah i did yeah. have one more which oh, fuck. came up because of something that dallas said which is when we were talking about like you know the having to kill someone it was like oh not in this situation but like if elowin could get their body back you know the lines they're willing to cross would be be a lot more uh, like, how far do you think your character would go, at least Pretty where they're far. sitting now, to get what they want? Yeah, that's like, my thought is like, I'm like, oh, yeah, I would go very far if someone like, you know, came up to Rhea and was like, I can grant you magic, kill both yeah. of these people. There is a chance that like, at that moment, it'd be like, cool, 600 years of There's waiting. There's not a chance. Yeah. That's 100% I would do that. What yeah. if it was uh, members of the party? Yeah, that... I. Honestly, I don't know if you want to ask me that question. Uh, not Elowin. I wouldn't kill Elowin. We've been friends for that long. Um... <laughs> cool. <laughs> okay. <Elowin. laughs> me? Fucking brutal. Oh, I, 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 feeling I, Dallas I, I would not return it. that favor. I don't think I could kill the rest of the party, so it would be foolish. <laughs> sure, I'm the only one you could kill. What about yeah, the only person... <laughs> The only person I could kill, Elowin. Won't yeah. do it. Everyone else, you can kill me. <laughs> well, but what about if it's not it's not a fight? It's just you're tied up to a chair. You have a vial of argon valudium. But not not Ave as far as I know. <laughs> we don't know what would happen if I got doused in argon uh, Yeah, it would be a lot harder at that moment. I don't think I would. I do care about you all. Um, I mean, in the grand scheme of things. Except for when drag like... runs away. <laughs> Yeah, in the grand scheme yeah. of things, like this has been your like pursuit for like 500 plus years. You've only known us for a few weeks, so that's true. Yeah, yeah. If Denny <laughs> threw it at me next session, yeah, that's a tough choice. Rhea becomes the big bad evil evil person. <laughs> that's that kind of how I feel as well, and I think that's also why, like, when that moment when Ellen was like, "Oh wait, we're a group," is I think actually very important for Ellen to like be like, "Oh, there is a group of people who actually like want." me around and like to have me around and i think that's because i i don't think she's ever really felt that before and so there would be no question to be like of course whatever i'll kill anyone if i have to to get my body back but i think you know if this continues this way that would make that choice a lot harder for her oh there's so many terrible outcomes that this campaign could have <laughs> so yeah. uh you know i'm uh I mean, it made sense from the session, but something else I wanted to bring up as well was I was surprised you, none of you guys like tried to interact with the other gangs in the the waiting room. But I mean, like, of course you did. You didn't want to play a cover. Um, but there was you, you found out what two of the other gangs had to do to get into the bid, but you never found out what that third job was. Yeah. The only That's thing true. I thought of with this is it felt like the jobs that each gang were given were jobs that did not suit their gang style was the only thing I noticed. Like there was like the blue guys had to fudge numbers on something, which felt like more of a thiefing thing. 
and the thieves had to go like break a bunch of shit which was not their style so it felt like every gang was given a task that was not their normal mo it was the only thing i got out of that i wonder if the shin Karai gang had to go rescue a cat from a tree yeah <laughs> something just like about that to something say really that. nice <laughs> they had to go donate so a what bunch were the of other what was the other two it was uh, I, I actually can't remember what they were now it was yeah. fudge oh. some numbers on a ledger and which was which oh, one what was storm guards that was, that was actually that was mary hall, hall. storm um, guards stole from the... merchants oh, okay that is more than right job. right 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 okay yeah uh, i was like very convinced that like the releasing there. of the fire go ahead denny oh sorry i was just saying yeah the, the one based on what that rat folk had told you it sounded more like their MO, but you didn't really get more of the details. So it's very well could be that this theory is correct. True. Yeah, I was really convinced like that releasing of the fire elemental thing was like one of them. But then it like because like at the time, like the only things we really knew about were like the ghosts and that. So I was like, okay, these both seem really high stakes. But then like learning what we were given, like everyone else, I'm like, okay, well, clearly like that ghost thing might have just been like Sarza doing her own thing not entirely sure what the deal was with the fire elemental in that regard. It seems like way more drastic than everything else. So mm, something way more drastic, perhaps for a group that's meant to be subtle and under the radar. Perhaps. Denny, I can't with you right now. If I'm being perfectly honest, you're yeah. stressing me out so I bad. Oh, hi guys, I made it. <laughs> <laughs> You as the person, we're, we're fine. You as the DM, we're on thin ice. Let me just say that. <laughs> <laughs> wait, oh, wait. I actually also have a question. I thought of after the session yesterday or the other day. Um, is anyone else concerned that Denny made a point to say that there were storage boxes in our rooms that you could put a lock on and then asked us which items we were taking with us? And no one, <laughs> no one I know of locked anything in a box. Don't you take my freaking <laughs> bullet crown, dude. I have plans so for that. I took everything. I, I, that's like one of those shower thoughts where I was like, hmm, I left a lot of stuff in that room. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I think I did say I locked mine, though, because I said specifically I left the platinum. So, like, I wouldn't have just left that if, like, I didn't lock it. So, mine's locked. At like, did it come with a lock or did we have to buy a no. lock? No, he said if you had lock. a lock. You, if you he had said a lock, if you, you could had lock a lock. It. None of oh, us have fuck. locks. Okay, wait, the, no, I just <laughs> heard then because like I heard that it like came with a lock. So that's why I left my stuff there. But if it didn't have one, I wouldn't have left my stuff. <clears throat> I left on my your favorite poncho in that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah it was like they were two completely separate conversations. And then it was just later, I was like, hmm, I wonder that's going to come back and be a problem. Yeah, well, and I'm stressed because I fully misunderstood that situation. Because, like, the only thing I left was the platinum and, like, the camping gear. But, like, um, I, mean, I wouldn't have left camping gear, right? <laughs> what? Are you. Well, I'm saying if you'd have realized, oh, no, yeah, I would. If I had realized, I would have taken the platinum, but I would have still left the camping gear because, like, why the fuck would I bring that with me, like, to uh, this meeting? Like, it seems crazy. But sure. yeah. oh, yeah, your platinum. Never mind. Fantastic. I was just like, I can lock this like room, so no one's stolen from me yet. No <laughs> one knows how to use these hard. doors anymore, so it's okay. So being a big ruse so that Cal and crew can steal of our shit. <laughs> this is all planned by Cal and crew. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's why you're so oh. willing to work with us. I don't want to see any of you again. I'm just going to steal <laughs> your things. <laughs> if he stole my bullet crown, he's going to see me again. Mm. <laughs> he's going to meet the devil real soon. <laughs> <laughs> oh... God, there's too many things in this campaign that I'm worried about now. I just can't like yeah. add any more to it at all. Especially now that one third of the party might be willing to kill you. <laughs> yeah, Look, apparently I'm just start... walking around with a bunch of people yeah. who to them my life is meaningless. In an extreme so... circumstance, it's not going to happen. Yeah. So I did to jump back a bit, but uh, Drac, what, what is Drac willing to do to find his brother? He's not going to kill innocent people. He knows that his brother is somewhere. He's been seen recently enough, and he knows that Boz can take care of himself. The thing he's worried about is what Boz has gotten himself into and why he's not coming home. 
Mm. He's more concerned about how Baza's um, absence is draining on his parents than he is about Baza's safety. He wants mm. to reunite the family, basically. Yeah. I know Gideon is like with what's going on in Balesville and resolving that. He's not like he's not going to kill innocent people. But I don't think he sees himself getting out of it, if you catch my drift. Like, I feel like he's willing to go down with the ship that is Balesville if he resolves it. But I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. <clears throat> yeah. For the record, I wouldn't kill any of you to unfreeze my family. I did really so. think you would. Yeah, I'm not killing any of you. <laughs> Unless you're like, you took. Know. I make no promises. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, Square I'll up. see how this <laughs> Square up. We'll see what happens. I can't wait for the moment that like my misguided faith in Abe completely backfires and you have to fully murder me. It's going to be really, really fun. It's going to be such a great role play moment for us. Yep. The yep. interesting thing wait. thinking about this is that that is only in a situation where someone right now is like, I can give you this thing. But like, as I had mentioned before, like I like Rhea's lost a lot of hope of that ever actually happening. And I think if a situation came up where it was like, you know, the party is going to die and they could like jump in the way to save one of you. I also think they would do that. I think this is only in a situation where someone came up and is like, I can give you this thing that right now you don't believe you'll ever get. Ah, truly chaotic Fair. good. Truly chaotic good. <laughs> I can appreciate that though. Yeah. Makes sense. Okay, well. I really have to pee, so <laughs> wild. <laughs> Shocking, I know. What she ended how we started, folks. <laughs> yes. It's all come full Christy circle. Peeing. The arrival we first began. Yeah, it's all full circle. Um, so any everyone feel like they said everything they need to say about this? How can we keep Christy here longer? <laughs> I'll just leave. I'll just leave someone else can do my my outro, but um there was only one small thing, and it was a stupid thought I had when. Please, Ryan. Please go right ahead. Do it. Do it. Do it. This will be very enriching for all of us, I'm sure. Uh, so when Dallas was saying, you know, when Elwin gets her body back, um, she doesn't really care if she gets betrayed by her patron. I just pictured that meme that's like, oh no. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> I have one goal and one goal only. <clears throat> Fair enough. That's it. Wonderful. Well, thank you all so much for hanging out with us as we discussed <laughs> our many thoughts and feelings and thoughts about memes, specifically about this past episode, actually episodes, Thrill the Chase and the Bid. If you lovely folks at home have any questions about the Play Dicely campaign that you would like us to answer, please send them to me on Twitter at cbkclo, or you can email them to me at cbkclo at gmail.com. And that's all for us, guys. We invite you to join us next time on Play Dicely After Party. Goodbye. Uh, uh, See you later. Hello. <laughs> no, not again. No, it's over. It's all, it's all circle. <laughs>